Top is without a doubt the hardest role in the game to learn and play. Very few good players, even from other roles, would disagree with that statement. It is by far the most punishing role in the game if you lose an early fight due to the melee versus melee nature of the lane. Going for every single CS is a massive hurdle, and it absolutely sucks to play top lane from behind. So the reason it's so hard to learn is because it feels like you need to know the ins and outs of every single distinct matchup that you're in. If you make a single trading mistake versus your opponent, the lane can turn into a disaster, which means that no other lane requires the level of matchup knowledge that top lane does. Well, technically that is. That statement is mostly only true at the highest levels of play. In reality, learning how to win every single trade in top lane can be quite easy at any level below around master's elo. And that's because most players are not at the skill level where matchups even matter. You have to earn the right to play specific matchups through proper fundamentals, and that doesn't happen until the peaks of gameplay. Trading around cooldowns, wave timings, wave size or location, and even individual minion health matters way more than anything else as far as you should be concerned. To show you how easy top lane can look when you understand trading fundamentals, we'll be taking a look at some games of our challenger expert Hector smurfing in Master's Elo. He's going to make even competent players look clueless when they have to deal with just his basic game knowledge that you can easily pick up too. And that's exactly what we specialize in at skillcap.com. We take the most effective strategies for climbing and simplify them so they're easy to learn. Take our course on how to counter overpowered top laners. You'll learn the secret tactics to easily stomp some of the most annoying champions in the game. Or maybe you just want a path to follow that will get you to your next rank. Then take our top lane course on getting diamond in 30 days. Our subscriber Cyberice was able to go from silver to gold. Coco was able to go from gold to platinum. And Fist of Heaven was able to go from platinum to diamond. Still don't believe us? Well, the best part is it's completely risk-free to try as you're kept safe with our rank up insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill cap, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by clicking the link in the description below. All right, now let's get into the first game we'll review with Hector on Gragas versus a Masters Riven main. This player probably has 10 times the amount of experience Hector has in this specific matchup, but let's watch how that won't matter in the slightest. Getting right into the lane, Riven makes a critical mistake instantly. There are a ton of matchups where you can't beat your opponent at level 1 because their ability is just stronger than yours. In matchups like these, you need to adapt and choose carefully for when you'll walk up to last hit or try to push. For example, waiting for your opponent to be busy last hitting is a great timing to walk up during the early levels. You can also adapt your skill order if necessary. This is like when Aurelia players start E at level 1 versus strong lane bullies. That way they can last hit the initial melee minions. Riven will do neither of these things. She started Q at level 1, which loses to Gragas E, and she's also posturing here in front of Hector's face when no minions are even low. Needless to say, she gets body slammed in the face. Now, in top lane, a lot of matchups can be about alternating turns based on cooldown usage. Hector has no body slam at the moment, while Riven still has her Q. This means it's her turn right now. There's two important things to pay attention to at this moment, so listen up. First, notice how carefully Hector is playing. He knows he loses any trade, so he's standing really far back and probably ready to concede a minion or two during Riven's turn. Now, let's go back and pay attention to Riven. She uses her turn to try try and get control over the wave. While a good intention, this makes no sense. You can't brute force wave control like this. The reason why is simple. She just used her whole turn to try and push. This means that Hector can just walk up and take control back when it's his turn. Who looks in control here? Definitely not Riven, right? Now, remember how respectful Hector was while his E was down? Yeah, Riven doesn't care and is just in Hector's face, so she gets slammed for free again. Surely, you get the point by now. This lane so far has all been about walking up and pressuring when abilities are either up or down. Based Based on that knowledge, should Hector try and score this last hit while Riven's Q is up and his own E is down? Obviously, this is a mistake by Hector that Riven caught onto and properly punished. Except that this ends up looking awful for Riven, and it's actually Hector that ends up dominating the trade. What gives? Remember that when we talk about guidelines or rules for trading, that that's all they are. Guidelines. It's important to understand the rules and why they're there, but learning when to break said rules is what can give you insane advantages over your opponents. This is a higher level concept, so don't feel bad if you never apply this in your games. Remember, Hector is a no-life challenger player, and this is a really niche and specific timing window. He's going to be able to cheat during Riven's attack timing to score this CS because of this incoming wave. There are a lot of champions that have to throw themselves forward in order to trade. Think Camille E, Shen Taunt, Irelia Q, Yone's third Q, etc. Or in this case, Riven. Because she has to cast Q forward to trade, this puts her in the middle of Hector's wave and the incoming one at the same time. You can also see how Hector has already turned around to fight now that his bait worked. Unfortunately for Riven, she noticed the problem way too late into the fight and has to run away, losing yet another trade. Anyway, with that done, both 
both players now look to hit level 2 as quickly as possible to spike first. Unfortunately, Riven doesn't know experience thresholds very well and mistimes her level 2 when going to trade. Almost everyone knows that to hit level 2, you need to kill only one melee minion from the second wave. But Riven hadn't killed all of the casters from the first wave. In situations where you haven't killed all of the first wave's casters, here's what you need to know. You need to have killed the first three melees and exactly two of the first wave's casters and a melee from the second wave. That will give you level 2. In any case, knowing all the variations and how you can reach level 2 first is a big deal. Hector knew he'd have the advantage in this fight, whereas Riven didn't know this specific variation. And as a result, she gets owned once more. Now, if we pause a final time, it's clear that Hector has won. All he has to do now is back off and wait for his cooldowns again to get another turn. This lane is definitely already over, but he has his Shaco on the way, so he pretends to mess up and give Riven an opportunity to all in him. Obviously, it was just bait, and they score an easy first blood. Now, many of you watching may think that this Riven looked completely bronze, but remember, it only looked that way because Hector overwhelmed her with pure fundamentals. This is why, as a top laner, you don't need to overly fixate on learning every individual matchup that you'll ever find yourself in. It's way too inefficient efficient to learn specific matchups when you're not even a challenger player yet. The best value learning you can get is mastering to trade around minion timings, cooldown advantages, etc. The basics alone will get you very far in this game when done properly. As you saw in that replay, there wasn't a single thing that Hector did that was matchup specific, and almost everything he did was incredibly simple, and something you could pull off yourself with a bit of practice. Now, of course, Gragas vs Riven is a good lane for the Gragas. What happens when you're in a losing matchup? Can trading properly around wave timings help you win despite the circumstances? Let's find out. In this game, Hector is Cho'Gath versus a Diamond Elo Camille. Let's first run you through how awful this lane felt early on. You've all played against a Camille before, so you know how infuriating it is when she builds up Grasp of the Undying. Then she just hookshots at you, stuns, and chunks you. All the while, she gets a massive shield that you can't break in time before she just disengages. This happened again and again and again, and you can see what a miserable time Hector is having trying to last hit from a million yards away with his Q. Even when he pre qs under himself to thwart her engage, it isn't enough to save himself from losing a ton of health. We just wanted to highlight how completely unplayable this lane is so far, because it's about to change completely with just one simple concept. This is very important to understand, so listen up. When you're winning trades in top lane, you should always try to ask yourself, why am I winning these fights and is the wave a reason for it? In Camille's case, she's clearly winning right now because she has a ton of room to work with. With the wave here, Camille has a very easy time stacking Grasp of the Undying. Then with so much room in the lane to work with, she can find hookshot angles from everywhere. As a champion, Camille just really likes having space to work with. There are other examples of champions like this, such as a Darius who chases someone down throughout the lane for a long trade, or Yasuos who like having room to work with to dash through minions multiple times to outplay their opponents. Akali as well loves a lot of space in the lane to go for long trades or kite in and out with her kit. That isn't hard to understand, but it's something many players often don't think about despite it mattering so much. So let's watch what happens when the wave inevitably begins pushing right outside Hector's tower. Pay very close attention to the complete 180 this lane is about to take. After Camille comes back from warding, look at the wave and where it is. This means that all the action is about to happen in this little corner of the lane next to Cho'Gath's tower. Without a ton of room to maneuver in, it's much easier to hit the Camille and punish her with a Q. Not only that, but she can't hook shot into Hector's tower to harass him while his Q is on cooldown. Seeing that the lane is falling apart, Camille desperately tries to crash the wave only to get punished again. Do you see how different this lane is now? It's not as if Hector just got an insane skill buff and Camille lost all her hands in just 10 seconds. The problem for her is that wave positioning and size is a really big deal in every single lane. For example, Shen likes short trades, so he loves it when the wave is right outside his tower. Or Kennen, who likes having the wave advantage so he can move up and queue the enemy for harass freely. Basically, your matchup can completely change based on how big and more importantly, where a wave is sitting in a lane. However, that is the last thing people think about when trying to figure out why they're losing, just like this Camille. Let's keep watching. After losing control, it should immediately go through Camille's head that the wave is in a bad spot. Hector clearly knows because he's holding the wave here, where it enables his own champion and disarms the enemy Camille. Let's test your knowledge. If Camille is truly aware of what's going on, what should she do with the wave right now to put it back into a favorable position? literally nothing. Right now, it's slowly bouncing back to her side of the lane due to the even minion rule. She can't do anything right now, so she just needs to be patient. Instead, look at what she does. She uses an AoE ability to last hit this single minion. That is not worth it, as that just keeps the wave in this horrible position for even longer. She can't even walk up for this following canyon minion, as Cho'Gath is completely in his comfort zone right now, and Hector just zones her off of it. Then, she initiates another terrible trade. Remember, she was winning before because she could ready her grasp before the trade and could threaten to chase 
chase with her Q2, but she has no grasp proc and can't chase Hector under his tower, so the trade sucks. Now, keep paying attention to how Hector is last hitting and not pushing whatsoever. Again, it's very clear he knows why and how he wants to play this wave relative to the matchup. Compare that to Camille, who continues to hit the wave and using AoE abilities to keep the wave on this side even longer. At this point, it's becoming more and more clear that she has no idea what's going wrong or how to fix it, so she just desperately tries to crash the wave, which just isn't possible. Eventually, she makes a critical mistake and cancels her own hook shot. With no flash, she's got no way out now. Even with Hector's terrible Q, he manages to eventually chase her down and score an easy solo kill. After those two replays, it should be clear that the difference between decent players and someone who really knows what's going on isn't some deep matchup knowledge. It didn't matter what lane matchups we looked at, the concepts would have been the same. In the first game versus Riven, Hector won by just playing around cooldowns and timings of when he should and shouldn't walk up to the wave. And in this Camille example, he just thought about what his own champion wants to do and what Camille is good at. Then he just positioned the wave in a spot where that would benefit him and the rest was simple. Meanwhile, it's clear from the enemy Camille's actions that she wasn't even thinking about that at all. If you begin applying these concepts in your own games more often, you'll find that you will completely destroy winning matchups. And even when you're in a terrible matchup, you might be able to turn things around with good wave knowledge. And remember, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then go to skillcap.com. Our service is completely risk-free as you're kept safe with rank up insurance. So what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by clicking the link in the description below. Alright, that's a wrap on this one guys. We here at Skillcap want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.